good morning reptilians welcome and welcome back to the channel so i think it was last week's video that i made a comment about upgrading cersei my red-eyed crocodile skin into a larger tub and it honestly didn't occur to me until i was doing it that this would probably be a pretty okay video because that's kind of what i used to do all the time was put tank builds on my channel and i haven't done that in quite a while so sorry so for this week's video i decided to film me upgrading her tub and show you guys so really quickly for those of you who may not know my red-eyed crocodile skink is in a tub as opposed to a normal tank we have tried several different sorts of tanks and tank setups for her and she honestly wasn't comfortable in any of those until we got her into a tub and we assume it's because tubs have those foggy walls it's not like glass where you can see directly into them and I'm assuming that's why she feels better is because she feels safer and she feels like she's hidden all the time this is not a huge tub I think in that last video I also said this was a 40 gallon tub it is not it is 58 quarts no idea where my brain was there red-eyed crocodile skinks do better in at least 20 gallons but for her specifically like I mentioned she liked that really small space so we're going to slowly upgrade her space and make sure she's comfortable at each step before we get bigger. So this is what she is being upgraded to for now. And really quickly, this video is sponsored by the Doobia Dude. So make sure to stay until the end of the video to find out how you can save 10% off of your entire order at the doobiedude.com. Let's do that setup. All right, so this is the tub that we are working with. As you can see, there's a label in there that says roaches because this is an old roach bin. That's why there are already holes drilled in the top. So really quick, just to some footage of how I did all that from an old video. I just marked where I wanted the holes to go and then a hole saw was used to drill those holes into the top. And once that was done, I just took some mesh screen and cut it out to go over the holes and used hot glue to fasten that into place and it worked out pretty great. We are gonna have to do a little bit of repair work on the screen of this, as you can see. This was set up for a year and then it was in my shed for the last few months and it was tossed around and stuff. So the screen didn't survive the tossing around. We also are going to add a little bit more ventilation to the sides of this. In the bin that she was in last, she didn't have as much ventilation because we were trying to hold as much humidity in as possible because as you guys know, crocodile skinks do like a lot of humidity, but it was holding in a little too much humidity. So we're going to put some holes on the sides here just to allow for a little bit of cross ventilation and for this I'm just using a drill bit I didn't really have a plan I just kind of started going once all that was done I started preparing the substrate so for this we are going to use a brick of cocoa fiber this is the Thrive PetSmart brand but any brand will do and I'm just kind of putting that into some water I didn't measure the water just put some in there but there are instructions on the package for those of you that ask and we just let that expand and I'm also adding in some chunks of Pro Cocoa because I really like how Pro Cocoa works and I really like how it mixes with the Eco Earth as well and we just let all that expand and then we can add some more things. So once everything expanded, I mixed it all together and also added in some expanded forest moss. And this is just another thing that's going to help hold in humidity. So this is really good with it. And the Pro Cocoa is also really good with holding in humidity. And of course, coconut fiber is also good for holding in humidity. And this is a mixture that I really like. It really works well. And I also sometimes will substitute the Eco Earth for topsoil, but in general, I really like this mixture. So back to the tub, once I cleaned that out, I did put a drainage layer in this tub because again, I want more circulation in this one and the drainage layer is going to allow that substrate to dry out a little bit so that the water just doesn't pool at the bottom because this is a very humid tank and we don't want pooling of water, which started to happen in the last one. This is not going to have live plants because she tends to uproot them and I did not have any success with her planted tank last time so for right now we're going to do fake plants but I still want the drainage layer and here you can see that I'm measuring for a mesh screen for the drainage barrier so that the soil doesn't get down into the rocks and for this I'm just using normal mesh screen that you get at Walmart or any hardware store or whatever so I'm just using a normal mesh screen and not an actual bioactive drainage barrier. I use two layers of screen and it works wonderfully, highly recommended. 
And then I'm just throwing that substrate mixture on top, paying close attention to the corners, making sure the substrate is tucked into the corners of the mesh screen before I just go dumping it on top, just to make sure that soil isn't getting down under the screen. I'm actually going to give her a pretty thick layer of this substrate because I noticed in her last little tub that she was actually using that she really enjoys digging. She will burrow and go under things, which actually is not a behavior that I knew that they did which I thought was really cool. And then Den came in to design how he wanted this tub to look because Cersei is his lizard. So he came in to figure out where he wanted things and yeah. Very important things to have in a crocodile skinks tank is a very large water bowl. Make sure that they can fit in it and they do sometimes like to climb and they need somewhere to hide. And again, we're not doing live plants, but I am putting springtails in her tank. I always do, and they always do really well, even without the live plants. And this is just going to help break down her waste since she is such a shy and reserved animal. We don't want to be reaching in there nonstop pulling poop and stuff out. So we kind of let the springtails take care of that. And because this tank is so humid and we are putting real driftwood into it, that does tend to mold without the springtails. And again, springtails do an amazing job of cleaning up any kind of mold that may develop in the tank. And then we went ahead and put her tub up on the reptile shelf and I'm just getting her probe thermometer and her heat pad and all that stuff set up and ready to go. And as you can see, there is also a light stand on this tank because I am taking my own advice and putting a UV light on the top of her tank. When I got her and I did all the research, everything said that they don't necessarily need UV lighting, but they are diurnal creatures for the most part. So I decided it'd be best to go ahead and give her one of those. And then it was time to put her in. She actually did not put up as much of a fight as we thought that she would. She let Den hold her. As you can see, she is kind of looking around. He thought she was playing dead, but she actually wasn't. She was looking around and trying to take in everything that was happening, but while still being in his hand. And once she finally got down, she was gone. And that's it. This is the view from our end of the tank, which actually looks really good. It is all foggy, so not like a glass tank where you can just admire it, but I think it actually came out really good. It definitely looks a lot better than her old one and is definitely a lot bigger than her old one. And then of course out front here where we can see it, we have the gauges measuring the hot side and the cool side. The humidity on this is showing 76%, but it went up to about 85% because we had just set it up. We just set it in there and it didn't have time to acclimate. But for those of you who were wondering about this humidity gauge a year later, it's still going. And this was her tank a couple of days later. As you can see, she already dug her little tunnel and she decided to use that as a hide instead of the actual cork bark. She just kind of dug a little cave and that's where she goes and hides. But she is already using the space, which makes me very happy. And that is it. I really like how it came out. I like how it looks from the front. So far, she seems pretty happy. She is moving back and forth in the tank. She's not climbing or showing herself as much as she did in the small one, but I think maybe once she adjusts to it a little more, it will get better. Hopefully, fingers crossed, because I do want her to have more space than that tiny tub. Hopefully, she adjusts to it. Really happy with how that came out. As I said at the beginning of this video, this video is sponsored by the Dubia Dude. The Dubiadoo.com is such a convenient place to get feeder roaches delivered directly to your house. So you don't even have to leave. Your animal's food comes directly to you, which is so cool. Dubia roaches are such a good feeder. They are very nutritious. They are much more healthy than crickets are. They don't stink like crickets do. They live so much longer than crickets. That is one of the biggest pet peeves that I have when dealing with crickets is how fast they die off. But with Dubia roaches, you don't really have to worry about that. And the Doobie Dude is a small business. So when you order your Doobie Roaches from the Doobie Dude, you are supporting a small business and they have subscription services. So you can set yourself up on a monthly basis and have them delivered to you every month or whenever you need them, which is also really cool. Make sure to use 
my code L at the doobiedoo.com to save 10% off of your entire order. Thank you so much to the Doobie Dude for sponsoring this video. As always, don't forget to follow me on my other socials and like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications every single time I put out a new video, which is every Sunday and some Wednesdays. This week's Instagram shout out goes to Flash Tree Trim for following me on Instagram and going through and liking a whole bunch of my stuff. This week's subscriber shout out goes to Brandon Baker for commenting on my videos for quite a while now and being super supportive. Thank you guys both so much. You are the bee's knees. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye. I made a comment about... Oh, I'm so sweaty. <laughs> so sweaty. Well.